Hey y'all, Billy and Milk Boy from Permapastures Farm. Okay, we're actually out here. It's been raining almost nonstop, day after day after day after day. There's a big pile of wood down there you can see, and there's, you know, compost piles laid out. That's all part of that, you know, clearing these woods over here. You might be able to faintly see some of the tape William has around some of the trees over there that are gonna be taken out. Those basically indicate the trees that are coming down. And there's a lot of them over there. Okay, but this this day, it's really gonna go hand in hand with something I saw really over at Eric Sider's channel. You wanna go check him out too. It'll be down below. And that's talking about the water flows on your property. We're gonna talk about the good and the bad and the ugly because it's not with those light sprinkles where you find it out. It's when you get those heavy rains like we've gotten over the last week and we got more coming. So I'm out here standing in between the raindrops, me and my intrepid guard puppy. Okay, first thing we're gonna cover, remember, for every 1% of organic matter you put down into that soil, and, and I'm talking like soil like over here, for every 1% you put down in there, you basically enable that soil to hold the equivalent of an Olympic sized swimming pool of water per acre. And that's just 1%, so that's extraordinary. So when you get those rainfalls, when the energy comes from the sky, we always talked about it before that you can either capture it, at least for a little while, deflect it, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment, or amplify it, or there are those cases where you can do all three, but those are projects we got in the future. Well, the first thing that I'm standing on right now is the very road, ain't that right, milk black? Here's the good, bad, and the ugly. We got these, um, these are basically those uh, channels or the uh, guards you see on the side of highways and interstates. Well, uh, what one thing that a lot of people do in these mountains is that they put them in their very steep driveways and roads, access, whatever they have. They put them out there and basically the rain falls from the sky, hits this and throws it out this way. Well, here's the problem with this one. And I've known this for a while, but this is when you find out where all your problems exist. You can see all this sediment down here where it's collected and then it hits the edge of the orchard, stops, and then here's the problem. But it's a good thing because I now identified it. It jumps over the side, as you can see, goes down and look at what happens. It washes out the driveway. So when you get these giant rain events, just like Eric was talking about in his video, look at every single part of your property. It's even better if you can go out during the rain event because the, the problems are way more well, not just the problems, but also the benefits are all have exclamation points on them, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna extend this. It's gonna make me a little bit sad because that blueberry right over here and um, this lavender is kind of in the way. So I'm gonna see if I can't offset that a little bit and then have it shoot out on the other side of the property, okay? So that's one thing. If I do just that one thing alone, all this washout where it's happening is gonna go away. So that's one problem that I can solve just by making this about another 10 feet longer. So that's one way. Okay, let's walk over here a little bit and I'll show you another way of how we deal with too much water. All right, y'all, going back to that organic material I was talking about, and this is what's so exciting about the work we do. So we're at that demarcation point where it's an orchard this way and to my back is basically a food forest, okay? So when we get a high rain event, we have the water cheated to where it throws it off to this side. It runs through this entire permaculture orchard, if it can, because a lot of it is absorbed. That's the beauty about having so much wood mulch and all this other stuff down there, is that your high rain events are less impactful than they ordinarily would be if you didn't have any organic material out there. So it basically meanders through here, makes its way through there, and then funnels down into the Hoogle Mound, which we'll show you in a minute, and then into the Love Pond. How cool is that? Now the same exact sort of thing, because it's kind of crowned a little bit, or at least we're trying to at this road, same exact thing over here. So we got all these, there's a lot you can't see from your vantage point, but believe me, there's a lot going on. This is our newest part that we're adding to the orchard up and down this road. So same thing happens over here. Well, even when we have high rain events, it's absorbed into the soil so the idea is is having that beautiful symbiosis of not only fantastic design but also taking nature 
you know, using nature as your number one batter. So let's go down here and talk about where this rain goes. But as I'm going, I'm going to talk to you about this next little means that we have to divert the water. Now it's all set up, and that's this one right here. The idea is over here, I know I want a pond, okay? And then there's going to be a damn wall back around that side of it, okay? But if I got water coming off this road, now there are some permaculture designers out there that would say this is, you should never have it come off a road. Poppycock, okay? Because, well, I can go into all the reasons that perhaps in one of our podcasts, I'll talk about that. But essentially, it's coming down here, gets diverted that way into the pond. Remember, we want to deflect it, capture it, and in some beautiful cases, amplify it, where it may be a pond that has a dam that you could use all that potential energy to do some very, very wonderful things. Now, going back to what we were talking about with the food forest, all that water is coming downhill. It's meandering through here, and let's talk about where it goes. Okay, first stop is this Hoogle Mound. It'll make its way around there and then bam, into the Love Pond. From the Love Pond, on the other side of my property, down at the very bottom, there's a drainage ditch right over there. Now the way it would typically go with that drainage ditch is that everything, it would drag everything out here. I mean, everything. Get down the road and then just keep on going, dragging everything with it. Well, this is capturing all those nutrients that just fell right through my food forest. How cool is that? All right, let's talk about another problem that we got to fix, and it's on the other side of this. Another problem. Remember, we're in that place I told you is ultimately going to be a pond. All the water basically comes down this giant bowl, um, and it sits right here if there's a high rain event. Now, we've put so much organic matter down into this soil that it has to be an enormous rain event to get to the point where I'm sloshing around in here like so. Ain't that right, Milk Wang? You like sloshing in here? Now... We're not yet complete, so what's gonna happen? We're gonna capture it one last time before it winds up out here. But what I'm seeing out here is, I got water that's, you can't possibly tell it right now, but it's leaching through here, out through there, into the road. I don't want that, not, not eventually. I mean, what I wanna do is hold that water on my property as long as I possibly can. So if that means putting, and this is what we have planned, Pond with a damn wall right here. Further up, another pond. Further up, another pond. All the way up to the top of this mountain. Sepp Holzer style. Where we're taking the right dog to the hunt. Where we're even in this environment where we're able to use swales to dump into a pond. Or maybe it's key lime we want to go with, depending on what we ultimately decide. Or every single structure where it sheds water exactly where we want it. Where we can capture it, amplify it. You get the point all that stuff brought to bear. How cool is that? And if you're wondering, well, I wish I could do that. Well, look, it doesn't matter. This is why I've encouraged everybody to go watch Eric's video, because no matter where you are, one of the key things that you need to worry about is where that energy is falling on your property. We talk a lot about rain, but you should also do it with your sunlight. Is it creating microclimates? Are you in a case where, for example, over here, other things you can bundle with it, where let's say I got this little catchment pond down here. Okay, do I want to situate trees, like for example, this apple tree right over here, do I want to situate it in close proximity because of the high specific heat that water will provide? Guess what? I can do magical things in this area with this little body of water that ordinarily I couldn't do. Look y'all, all goes back to design, all goes back to taking the right dog to the hunt, and that's exactly what we're working on. But I just exposed some of the problems that we need to fix, and we will with really good design. All right, y'all, you need anything from us? Um, if you quit pushing me into this pond, doggy, you need anything from us, whether it's Comfrey Bone Sauce, world's best deer repellent, and we make it right here. Comfrey, we still got some, and if you can work that soil, you can still plant it. Um, EMP Shield, we got that down below. Butchering video, we got that too, y'all. Anything you want to check it out, just look, anything you need, check it out down below or at the website. Till next time, this is Billy along with my intrepid guard puppy, Milk Boy. And yeah, you got to say it that way or he's not going to come. All right, y'all. 
We're from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.